Hey, Jeff here from HangingByTheMoments.com. I uh, want to take a few minutes to just talk to you about um, something that was mentioned on the CNC Troubleshooting Facebook group. Uh, if you're not part of that, I suggest you go check it out. It's kind of new, less than a week old. Um, idea that Garrett Promy came up with and approached me with and decided we'd run with it and see what happened. It's doing good. So I asked for some feedback from you, and what I saw mentioned most was um, grounding and EMI issues. And I think, I can't remember who it was, but somebody posted on there about, you know, what makes your machine stop in the middle of a cut. And often that's related to EMI or Cable management, I guess, would be one way to look at it, and that includes grounding. Grounding will be a topic that we'll have to really dive into. I'm probably going to have to come up with some charts and some, like, um, set up, like, a little dry erase board here or something like that. And so that may take a little bit of time, but I wanted to take this time, just taking a break out of my day from been cutting stuff all day and decided to take a little bit of a break, but I decided to just go ahead and share this uh, topic with you because there's a lot of interest in it. And so what I want to talk about is what well, I want to talk about how EMI can actually cause your machine to stop in the middle of a carve. So to explain it simply, you have a controller. Most, well, most of the hobby machines out there run what's called an Arduino, which is a microprocessor. And they're connected directly to the computer by USB. The Onefinity, and there's a handful of other ones out there, don't operate that way. They have what's called a Raspberry Pi. It's another type of, for lack of a better way of describing it, it's a Linux computer. Um, that being said, I'm going to talk more about the Arduino-based systems because that's where you tend to see more of this issue happen, uh, or I do. And so what what's going on in this system is your computer is talking to your controller, and the controller is sending pulses out to the stepper motors. And the Arduino has to have a back-and-forth communication. So it's sending and it's receiving, it's sending and receiving. And um, what will happen is you'll get EMI or electromagnetic interference on the USB wire or your controller or on the computer. And just for a split second, it'll cause a um, disconnect. It'll be expecting to see something and not see it. Or the computer will be expecting to see something and it doesn't see it. So sometimes you'll actually see the controller fault out and the computer looks like it's still running. It's going through the G-code and sending it out. Sometimes you see the computer show that it's disconnected and the, Ar the Arduino or the controller is fine. Um, it goes both ways. And that is typically because of that EMI or electromagnetic interference. So what causes that electromagnetic magnetic interference is you'll hear people refer to it as crosstalk and what it actually is it's a magnetic field that goes from one wire to another wire and there's different things you can do to try to eliminate that and that's what I want to kind of share with you now um, number one that I would do is I would separate the circuits um, that you have things running. Like I would have an independent circuit for my computer, I'd have an independent circuit for my um, controller and an independent circuit for my router. And honestly, if you run a dust collection system, I'd have an independent circuit for that. Because what tends to happen is every kind of electric motor will generate noise. And that noise will show itself generally more so on the neutral wire or the white wire inside your uh, cable and 
they can actually, if you get too much of that, it, it creates what they call a harmonic, and it's it's where the, the two signals kind of cross each other, and one kind of looks like the other. And when I say that, it's... It can cause your computer to think it sees something that it doesn't, or it can have a momentary lapse in power. Uh, so I separate those circuits, and it can be split second, so fast you can't even see it blinking, and that's all it takes. Or really, if you're sharing those circuits, you can actually see that drop in voltage, and that can cause enough for your switching power supply to just turn off, or just won't even actually turn all the way off but it allowed the capacitors in it to drain down a little bit and actually weaken the power and cause a disconnect. Um, and what you'll see a lot of times too is as this router is moving through stuff, and if you get into like a bind, you'll hear that pitch of that router change. And that change shows itself on the electrical lines. And it can actually cause that magnetic, it's changing that magnetic field. And it can actually cause that to feed back through that neutral. So if you separate that and give everything a direct line back to your panel, that can do away with a lot of that noise. The other thing you can do is your USB cable. Don't run your USB cable next to your router or your vacuum run it completely separate. And when I say that, it doesn't have to be 10 feet away. It has to be maybe that far away. Because when you bundle them together, and I've seen this done before, I've seen people actually use wire ties and run that right next to the power wire. What that does is it allows that magnetic field to actually get into the cable itself. That being said, you know, separating will do, will help some, but you can still have a problem. And what I, the other thing I see people do a lot is use one of these little, what I call just a little throwaway USB cable. I think this one's actually for a camera, but it demonstrates anyway. See how thin and small that wire is? It's not meant to be run 10 foot long, okay? You can actually buy these little USB extenders that are retractable. And if you're using one of those, stop. That, that's all I know to tell you to do, just don't use them. They're, they're okay if you're gonna charge your phone, but I'm not sure that I'd even do that because the wire is generally very undersized for those and they're just, they're cheaply made. Not to mention your wire is being flexed and pulled all the time. So don't use a cheap cable. The other thing I want to talk about is what makes a good cable, a good USB cable. See how thick that one is? Well, I got a USB cable that I cut so you can kind of see. And there's actually three layers. If you kind of look at this, you have your wires on the inside. This probably shows better. The wires are on the inside, and there's this foil, and then this wire is actually wrapped around the outside. It's kind of braided. You can see it like that. So what happens with a good twisted wire like that is those wires, and you'll usually see like the red and black wire, and you can kind of see it here. The red and black wire are running here, and then the white and the green wire are actually twisted together. The white and the green wire is communication. This is power. And the reason they twist those wires right there together is when they're overlaid like that, they cancel each other out. So if you get noise on this wire, it'll, rather than it just inducting onto the other one, if it does, it goes right back into that wire. So it, it cancels itself out. You see this same thing done in network wires. And that's why it matters if you've ever taken apart like a Cat5 cable. You'll see that there's different pairs in there, and each pair has a different twist on it. And when I say that, some of them are really tight, and some of them are kind of loose as far as the twists go. And it does make a difference on which wires go there based on the length of the cable. 
And you can ask me how I know that, and I'd have to tell you because of trial and error, because I've done it the wrong way. Um, but it does make a difference. So use a good quality, and you can usually tell by it being thick. And the other thing you'll see on a good quality USB cable is this little thing. And that's called a ferrite core or a ferrite bead. And what that actually is, it's a, it's a magnetic material that is designed to cancel out noise that's generated within the cable. And it's supposed to kind of protect against uh, noise coming into the cable. And if you've ever noticed, usually you'll find the uh, ferrite bead pretty close to the plug-in side on the computer. This is the other side, that's the printer side, but sometimes you'll see them on both. But that's what these are supposed to do, is it's got a magnet in there and it actually is supposed to cancel out all the uh, noise that gets inducted onto that line. So use a good quality cable. Not all thick cables like this actually have a ferrite um, bead or ferrite core on them. That's not a big deal. You can buy these ferrite cores. You can get, I think, $9, $10 will get you a dozen of them off Amazon. They're pretty cheap. Um, and talking about ferrite cores, when you get also on your router, if you're using like this Milwaukee like I've got, and even the DeWalt's, they come with a ferrite core on them. And what I see people do often is they'll take that ferrite core off. And when they take that off, they're not doing themselves any favor. They're just generating noise uselessly. And the reason they'll take them off usually is so they can, um, so they can extend that cable, which I did there, but you put the ferrite core back on. Um, uh, so those are the things that you can do, you know, uh, make sure I covered everything. Separate your circuits. Keep your USB wire away from all your other signals. That includes stepper motors too, because they're generating noise too. And use a good quality USB cable. That means one that's got twisted, shielded, and grounded. Twisted, shielded, and grounded. Uh, wires in it and then make sure that your USB cable has a ferrite bead on it if you're still having problems. I would suggest going ahead and putting ferrite beads on it. Definitely put one on your router if you're running a router. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Now this goes for people that have spindles and this is a, it's another place that you can get noise. If you're running a spindle, you have what's called a VFD. And a VFD stands for Variable Frequency Drive. Those things put out all kinds of noise. And they usually handle a lot of the grounding and stuff within those. So you don't tend to see as much noise from that, but you'll still see noise from the spindle itself. Um, but it's if you make your cables right for that, it's usually handled within everything. But keep your USB cable away from your VFD. Don't run it close to the VFD. Because you're just you're asking for trouble when you do that. Um, I guess that's it. That, that covers everything that I've got on my sheet anyway. So if you got any questions, if you say, hey, you're, you don't know what you're talking about, feel free to... Um, this is just what I know from my years working in aerospace instrumentation. This is stuff that I've seen over the years. Could I be wrong about stuff? Of course, I'm human. Um, I do want to say one thing before I leave, and this has to do with the CNC troubleshooting uh, Facebook group. Y'all, good grief, it, it's just, it's amazing. I don't know what else to say. It's just mind-boggling what's happened in the last three or four days. The The group's only been up since Tuesday or Wednesday of this week, I think. And here it is Saturday, the 
I don't know, September something, 4th, I guess. It, it's been three or four days. And I'm every hour I'm getting people wanting to join. And I'm already seeing conversations on there. It's it's way more than what I anticipated. And thank you. This is exactly the kind of thing that I, I want to see happen. I want to see us have groups to where we help each other with these problems. Because these machines are complicated. Um, and a lot of people get intimidated by them. And that's really what we want to try to eliminate. Garrett and I have talked about this, and that is one of the things that I want to eliminate. I want to take away that fear factor that people have when they're looking at buying one of these machines. Or if they want to upgrade to a spindle. Everybody, some people are very hesitant to do that. There are ups and downs to that, and you have to be careful with some things. But I mean, if you want to get in there and you want to really tweak with these and you want to play with settings, or you need to figure out how to change a setting because something's gone wrong with your controller, or stuff like that. That's what this kind of group's for. And I know that there's a lot of people like myself that have done this stuff for years. And I'm just one of them. So, you know, putting together this group, it's just been amazing. I, I just, I, I can't, I can't thank you enough. Y'all keep it up and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep going from here. I'll keep trying to do some more videos. Uh, Y'all hit me up with suggestions or ideas of things that you'd like to see done, things you want to see covered. And like I said, the, the grounding thing we'll get into, we'll talk about star grounds and the proper way to do that kind of stuff or what I feel the proper way is. Um, I guess that's really all I got to say. Y'all you know, just uh, keep up the good work in the CNC troubleshooting page. Check out uh, Hanging by the Moments as my website. Um, of course, I'm going to throw out a word for Garrett too. Go to IDC Woodcraft and check out the CNC Entrepreneur page. All of them very good resources if you're trying to figure out how you how to make the machine work or you're trying to step out and get started in this. These are the places to go, without a doubt. Y'all have a good day. Go watch some football because it's Saturday, guys. And uh, we'll see you next time.